They package their stuff really nice so it, it can't get out of the, the box and ship it. So this is actually a Deutsch connector kit, electrical connection, that they sent me to try out. And you can buy all this on their website, FridayParts.com. Looks to be a real nice kit. It's all in its own plastic container. This is the crimp plier set for the connectors. Yeah. So this is the tool to crimp the connectors. There it is. Looks exactly like the one on the loader now. So get swapped out. Well, in order to get this injector pump off, there is a nut right underneath of it. And with the air compressor in the way, it is a bear to get to that nut. So it's simple enough to take the air compressor off. We already got the lines disconnected. I had to drain the uh, antifreeze down in the engine because the head of the air compressor is cooled by antifreeze. So we got one nut left here to go. And then I'll be able to slide the air compressor out and take it out. And then we will be able to get to the nut on the bottom of that injector pump. It is nice though that the injector pump from Friday Parts has all the brackets on it already for the throttle linkage and all that. They did a good job of getting all that in the right spots. There we go. There's the air compressor. Now that that air compressor is out of the way, we can start taking some fuel lines off and then we'll have to uh, get the pump off and there's a procedure you got to go through to get the pump off and we'll go through that when we get to that. So I'm going to take a crow's foot line wrench to get to this fuel line right here that's in behind the front cover and in front of the injector pump. Let's see if we can get that one. Oh yeah, we got it broke loose. Now we can start taking our injector lines off. We'll have to take the injector lines off of the, the injectors also and take them completely out so they're out of the way in order to get this pump out. Okay, so before we tear anything else apart, we've got to get the 5.9 Cummins on top dead center uh, so we can lock it in position. Uh, what we need to do to find top dead center is we need to get our pin to go in here to the corresponding hole on the back side of the cam gear and we also need to make sure that our valves are loose so that tells us we're in top dead center so we're going to roll the engine over and this plug or pin or whatever you want to call it will actually poke into the cam gear and tell us when to stop get that make sure make sure you got that good and freed up so it moves so i'm going to hold pressure on it and there it was so that is now poked into the cam gear. Our valves are loose. I actually think I need to uh, adjust the valves on this engine. That seems a little too loose, but that's, that's fine for now. We'll deal with that later. But uh, now everything is locked on top dead center and we can proceed with taking the injector pump the rest of the way off. And before I take this injector pump off, I'm also going to lock it on top dead center. Just as simple as taking this out right here. Well, you don't take it out, you loosen it. You take this tab out, this tab right here. And then you tighten this back up. When you tighten that up, it actually puts that bolt into the pump shaft and holds the pump on top dead center. Now we can go ahead and remove our nut off the end of our injector pump shaft. Your 
supposed to put a towel down in the bottom of there so you can't drop the nut down in the timing gear case, but I'm not too worried about it. Set those to the side. And then I have a puller. I actually use this for the pulling truck. So when I adjust the timing on it, I believe it'll work on this one also. There's two threaded holes, one here, and then there's one, well, I don't know if this puller's going to work on this one. Nope, I'll have to go find a different puller. This is for a P7100 P-Pump, it's not the same. All right, so I got that pump gear off. I just had to use a just a simple puller that I had and uh, just tighten it up against the shaft and pull the gear right off. You gotta be careful when it pops because if you got your knuckles against this screen right here, it keeps your hands out of the fan. When it pops, it'll go real quick and you'll get your knuckles on that. So now that the gear's off, we can take the pump off. We'll be able to pull the pump out of the front cover. All right, I got the three nuts off to hold the uh, injector pump on. That's it right there. So this is a pump gasket. I've got the front cover cleaned up. We're gonna put that on there. We're gonna install it dry because what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to get that pump back into the gear and torque it. And we need to move that pump ever so slightly for the gear lash in the front case. So we'll just leave that with no silicone or anything on it. So we got the pump ready right here. Now I put some white grease on the keyway to help hold it in the groove, or the key in the groove. So hopefully we'll gently shove it in the gear and that won't come out of there. We don't want to lose that down the front cover. three nuts back on hand tight on the pump you want it to just uh, float there you don't want it tight yet we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put the nut and the lock washer back on the pump shaft and then before we torque that nut we want to unlock our timing on our engine so that if it does by chance turn it don't shear our timing pin off. Now we're going to take a torque wrench and we're going to do our first torque on the pump to 20 newton meters. Now that everything is, the backlash is set for the gears and all that, and pump is unlocked, the engine is unlocked, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to set the torque on the nut for 60 foot pounds. We 
go. Set it 60 foot pounds. So now we can start putting everything back together. Well, it's all put back together, except this bracket right here. I'm gonna wait and make sure it runs before I put all that back in, in case I have to tear it back apart. But everything should be right. So we'll see what happens. George is putting the water back in it right now. I'm going to prime it a little more and then we'll see what happens. So we did find a fuel line that uh, we decided to fix. So that's why in the video you'll notice at one point the fuel lines were all off of it because I took them off and inspect them. There was a wear spot and it wasn't all the way through. It wasn't cracked or anything, but dad went ahead and brazed it up just to make sure that it didn't become a problem. After getting everything adjusted, took it out of the shop, took it out back, rooted around with the rake for a little bit, got it warmed up to operating temperature. Everything's good, runs fine, runs smooth. So that Friday parts pump is gonna work out pretty good, I think.